Hi there, so today what we're going to be doing is setting up a Windows 7 environment in order to start our malware analysis. Um, I'm going to be going through a few tools as well. It's going to be relatively quick. Um, there's going to be a few of these videos going out roughly the same time, so um, just check back for the series. If you have any questions on it, obviously you can always comment in the YouTube comments, but I'm always going to check Twitter first, so I'll put my Twitter handle in the description and then you can tweet at me or DM me if you want and I'll answer any questions that you have either about the video or about anything else um, yeah let's let's get started so first thing you need to do though is you need to download VirtualBox Manager and your operating system now I use VirtualBox Manager because it's easy it's very good for beginners um, if you have a, a, another preference then that's absolutely fine um, but we're going to be using VirtualBox Manager for this bit uh, it's just very user friendly. I just like how it's all laid out. That's why I use it So what we're gonna do is we're now gonna talk about our operating system that we're gonna be using now I Run a 64-bit operating system on just my normal normal desktop, okay, and That's why I'm gonna be using uh, Windows 7 Ultimate uh, 64 and um, which is As it doesn't it says there 64-bit operating system um, now my primary experience with malware analysis is on 32-bit operating systems, uh, x86 uh, architecture. But for the demonstration, because one of the tools we're going to be using is only 64-bit only, it's not, it doesn't come in a 32-bit uh, system. That's why I'm going to be using this. Um, I'll include as well um, a link to a GitHub repository called Malware Unicorn. Malware Unicorn does some really, really good... Uh, tutorials on analysis uh, they even provide you with um, this a victim and a sniffer package and uh, you can it'll follow along with that and basically look at what's odd in uh, certain strings and whatnot but we will do that another day I'm assuming so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna load up our Windows uh, operating system and we're gonna name it and we're gonna give it base memory now I'm giving it this much. I'm giving it four gig, and that's just because it's the the operating system Windows Seven Ultimate does take up quite a lot. So we're gonna create that now, and we're just gonna leave all that standard. What I do here though is is just a rule of thumb, just to make sure there's enough space. I double it, and then that's done. Now all we have to do is go into settings, leave pretty much everything else the same, but go to storage, and where this disk is empty. Click on this disk and then choose virtual disk from file and then choose the one you want to load. But before you even think about downloading one, the first thing you need to do though is you need to find out what your operating system is. So mine's 64 bit, it's all hence 64 bit. Now, when it comes to choosing the right one, um, you can download them obviously from other places, but if you have your Windows product key, uh, the 25, uh, letter and digit product key and um, you can actually download previous versions of Windows from Microsoft for free so that's where you can get it from I'm not going to include the link for these because these like I said are downloaded from there um, so don't ask um, if you want to find it elsewhere then find it elsewhere that's fine now we're just going to start it up and we're going to install it uh, I'm going to skip past quite a lot of the installation because it is just sort of waiting around and make a cup of tea or something and then we'll discuss a few things after that So it's loading up the files now. Okay. Now everyone's done these setups before, I'm assuming. If you haven't, it's relatively easy. And we're going to click install now. Like I said, I've given this four four gigabytes of RAM, and it's it's still running a little bit slow. So we're going to accept the licenses and we're going to click custom because upgrade just means that um, it'll upgrade whatever OS you've got on at the moment and because it's a virtual machine you don't have any on so custom advanced if there's if there's less than whatever you put here so I've put my total size of 64 gigabytes if it's anything less then just click these and then format there right, now it's going to install so um, I'll skip this and I'll just tell you how much time it, it, it took to actually do that, okay? Alright, welcome back. So, 
after your virtual machine resets a few times, don't press any keys or anything like that when it's installing. If you press the keys, then it'll start the reinstallation process again. You've got to go through all of that. But you just leave it alone. Just like I said, just go away and get something. Um, we're just going to type in a name now. So it's just malware. I'm not going to bother with a password. All right, now when it comes to this, don't add your product key in. If you've downloaded this from Windows, and even if it is like a legit copy and you do have a product key for it, don't put it in. And that's purely because malware that you're going to be analyzing can steal anything. And I mean anything. So just just gloss over it, skip next or skip or whatever. Use recommendation settings, set your time zone, set up your network. It'll apply some settings, it'll probably do a couple more resets and then it'll go through. Um, with this being a fresh install of Windows, um, it's going to obviously have a connection to the internet through the virtual machine. Uh, so window, so updates will come on. Um, just postpone those. Just leave them alone. You don't need to do the updates. You'll end up getting an update for like Windows, uh, Windows 8 or some service pack that you don't actually need. So we'll go through that. Uh, some of the tools that we're going to be using as well might need some uh, DLL downloads. Um, so just bear in mind if it does see if there's anything missing, just Google those uh, and just Google whatever the DLL name is, download, and then just um, copy and paste it into the into the file that you're trying to install it into. For example, I know um, we're looking into the, the upload now. I know Hexanator requires um, some DLLs. So when you open up Hexanator, you're going to get a, a file. When the when you download the DLLs, just paste it into here and then that's it you just move this over to the program files um, directory and that's that that's done so yeah once this is installed I would recommend getting a different browser because Internet Explorer is a pile of crap so Chrome or Firefox I usually get both um, Firefox is the main browser that I would use but Chrome is the one for uh, any add-ons that I need such as SQL uh, Lite Manager um, just in case you come across any malware that has any uh, databases, you can check those out using the SQL SQL Lite Manager. Um, it's just a standard thing that that I use when it comes to um, decompiling files and decompiling EXEs and APKs and stuff. It's just it, it does come in handy at some points. But um, once it prepares your desktop, that's it. You're all set. We'll discuss the installation of the tools and whatnot in the next video, which should be up by now, so go check that out real quick. Like I said, if you do have any questions, come to Twitter first and tweet at me. If you want to follow me, you can. I do tweet out some, well, I do retweet some really cool stuff. So have a look at that. And uh, yeah, so I'll see you in the next one. Bye.